Hello everybody. It uh, seems like 95% of the world hates math and today we're going to learn just one little piece of math called factoring and you're going to get it in just a couple of minutes. So uh, let's get started. When we're talking about factoring, I mean that we're specifically referring to y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're talking about quadratic equations. And factoring could apply to many other variations of equations, not strictly into quadratics, but it does specifically come up with quadratics when you're talking about high school math. Let's start off with simple factoring. And here's an example. x squared plus 8x plus 12 is equal to 0. Now, we can apply simple factoring here because a in our case is equal to 1. If there's no number in front of x, that means a is equal to 1. And whenever a is equal to 1, we can apply this simple factoring. So the strategy here is called PSI. P stands for product that is between a and c. In our case, a is 1 and c is 12. So the answer here would be 12. The sum which would just be b, and b is 8 in our case. And i stands for integers, so that would be two numbers that would multiply to p, so the product, that would multiply to 12, and they would add together to make 8. So in our case, that would be 6 and 2. 6 times 2 is 12, and 6 plus 2 is 8. And therefore, we're going to just complete the factoring x plus 6, we're going to put them in brackets, times x plus 2 equals 0. And that is in factor form. Let's take a look at another example. 2h squared plus 18h plus 36 is equal to 0. Well, in this case, it kind of looks like a does not equal 1. However, we can factor out a 2 from all the terms and make that happen. So if we factor out a 2, we're going to have 2 bracket h squared plus 9h plus 18 equals to 0. Now if we look at inside the brackets, a is 1 right here since it's not there. So what we're going to do is do simple factoring 2 inside the bracket. So let's do PSI. P in this case will be 18, S is 9, and the integers must be 6 and 3. 6 times 3 is 18, 6 plus 3 is 9. So we got 2 with H plus 6 times H plus 3 equals to 0. And you can expand this and do FOIL if you want to verify that that's what it equals. Next, we're going to factor by grouping. Here's an example. 3x squared plus 28x plus 9 will equal to 0. Now, in this case, clearly a does not equal 1. Instead, a is actually equal to 3. So, And we cannot factor it out since 28 doesn't divide by 3. So what do we do in this case? Well, uh, we're going to start our PSI. And here, p is going to be 3 times 9, since it's a times c. And 3 times 9 will be 27. And s will be b, which is 28. And our integers must be 27 and 1, since 27 times 1 is 27. But 27 plus 1 is 28. So instead of uh, writing down the answer like we did with simple factoring, here we're going to split the middle term. So we're going to have 27x plus x plus 9 is equal to 0. We have effectively split 28x into 27x plus 1x. Next, we're going to put our terms in brackets. 3x squared plus 27x plus x plus 9. And we're going to factor out whatever's in the brackets. x plus 9, nothing to factor out, nothing common between these two. But we have 3x that's common between these two terms. So 3x is factored out. 
and we're left with x plus 9, and here's another x plus 9. So what happens here is that now we're going to group the like terms. So essentially, the 3x plus 1, since this is a 1 here, and we're going to have an x plus 9, which is equal to 0. And that would be uh, in factored form. And if you're going to be looking for your x values, all you have to do is set them to 0. Because if you set one of the brackets equal to 0, then whatever's here doesn't really matter because anything times 0 is 0. So it would make that equation true. So what we have to do here is now we're going to bring that out here and x plus 9 will equal to 0, x must equal to negative 9. And for the second term, we're going to have x or 3x plus 1 equal to 0, where x will equal negative 1 over 3. And that means we're going to have two x-intercepts, one at negative 1 over 3 and 0, and the second one at negative 9 and 0. These are the two points of x-intercepts. Now, if you encounter a case where you cannot find integers that would multiply to p and add to s, what we're going to use is called quadratic formula. And the formula is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And all of that will be over 2a. So for example, if we have a problem of 7x squared minus 12x minus 9 is equal to 0. Well, in this case, if you do 7 times negative 9, that's negative 63. And well, so our p is negative 63 and our s is now negative 12. If you are looking for the integers, you can't. There are no whole numbers that would multiply to negative 63 and add to be negative 12. So in this case, we're going to have to work with this formula and plug all of our numbers in. So what we have is a is equal to 7, b is equal to negative 12, and c is equal to negative 9. And now let's plug all of these values into our formula. In this case, when we simplify, we eventually are going to end up with two x values. So x1 is going to be when we have b plus the square root, and the x2 will be when b is minusing the square root. So negative times negative 12 is going to be just positive 12 plus the square root of 396, if we simplify what's under the square root, over 14. Now for x2, we're going to have 12 minus the square root of 396 over 14. And the answer that we get for x1 is going to be rounded to about 2.28. And the answer we get for x2 will be rounded to about negative 0.56. So in terms of our x-intercepts, the coordinates are going to be 2.28 and 0, and negative 0.56 and 0. You may encounter certain special cases. So here's the first one. If we have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, it is going to equal a minus b squared. And we can use that just to make our life a little bit simpler. For example, if we have 16x squared minus 40x plus 25, you may notice that you can square root both the ends, so here and here. And once you do square root them and you multiply those two together, and multiply them by 2, it's going to end up with 40x. So if you can recognize that, then our answer will then be 4x minus 5 squared. Since 4x is going to be the square root of 16x squared, and 5 is the square root of 
25. And if you think this is magic, uh, we can just go ahead and expand this and see if we arrive at the same conclusion. For this case, we're going to have to foil. So 4x times 4x is 16x squared minus 20x minus 20x plus 25. And our answer, 16x squared minus 40x plus 25. So bingo, we get what we started with. Another example is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So just the sign change, and that is going to result in a plus b squared instead of a minus b squared. So here's an example of that. If we have x squared plus 10x plus 25, what we would end up with is basically two integers that would uh, 5 times 5 would be 25 and 5 plus 5 is 10, which is weird. So uh, we could have done this with simple factoring, but this still applies. And our answer would have to be x plus 5 squared. Now, if you expand this and you do your FOIL, you'll find that you will arrive at the same place that you started. The next special case, which isn't uh, very special because it comes up pretty often, would be a squared minus b squared. And the answer for this one is going to be a minus b times a plus b. So if we have an example of 20x squared minus 125, well, over here you probably recognize that you cannot square root to 20. However, and you also can't square root of 125. So what we can do is factor out a 5 first. So 5 is factored out. We end up with 4x squared minus 25. Aha, uh -huh. well, now I can square root 4x squared and I can square root 25. So this would apply to our bracket. So we end up with 5 bracket a minus b, which would be 2x minus 5 and 2x plus 5. And if you again expand this, you'll see that you arrive at the same conclusion. Here's another special case, but you're not going to see this one as often, but I figured it is important to include it anyway which would be a cubed minus b cubed. And the answer would be a minus b and then a squared plus a b plus b squared. And here's an example of that. So if we have 27x cubed minus 8, our a is going to be 3x and our b in this case will be 2. So if we put that as part of our solution, it will be 3x minus 2 times, and 3x squared is now 9x squared, plus ab is 6x, plus b squared is 4. And here's another one, a cubed plus b cubed. And for this one, it's the same, but the sign is now going to change to plus and it's going to end up being a squared minus a b plus b squared. Here's just a basic example of x cubed plus 125. And for us, a is going to be x and b is going to be 5. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. So our answer now will be x plus 5 and x squared minus 5x plus 25. Now, how about something like this? If we have x plus 1 squared minus 16. Well, again, something to recognize here is that we have a squared and another squared term because if I square root a 16, I'm going to get a 4. So effectively, we have a that's equal to an x plus 1 and we have a b that is equal to 4 and that is just an a minus b uh, a squared minus b squared scenario so if we have that scenario we know how to deal with it because we know the rules and that's essentially going to end up being a minus 4 times a plus 4 
And in that case, if we just substitute the x plus 1, uh, then we're going to end up with x plus 1 minus 4, close the big brackets, and x plus 1 plus 4. And so if we open all that up, we're going to end up with x plus 1 minus 4 is going to be x minus 3. And in this bracket, we're going to get x plus 5. And that would be the answer. And here's another fun one. 2x minus 1 squared minus x plus 2 squared. So again, we have a similar a squared minus b squared scenario where we just have a as 2x minus 1 and b as x plus 2. So if we use our rule, we're going to end up with a minus b times a plus b. And in this case, we can just substitute all of that in. We open all the brackets. We end up with 2x minus 1 minus x plus 2. The reason I put a minus 2 here is because the negative acts like a multiplier. So you're going to multiply each of the terms inside in order to change their signs. As you can see, the x from, went from positive to negative, and the positive 2 went to negative 2. Now, if we combine like terms, 2x minus x is just x. Negative 1 minus 2 is minus 3. And on this side, we have 2x plus x, which makes it 3x. Negative 1 plus 2 will be plus 1. So this will conclude our video for today. If you want me to continue doing videos on math up until the exam, let me know in the comments down below.